friends and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Brianna and today's video, we are going to be talking about things to pack for breakfast and lunch on work days. This is always so tough for me because I have to get up so incredibly early in the mornings. I am at work by 3.30 in the morning, hashtag nurse life. So there is absolutely nothing open to get any sort of breakfast or lunch or anything on my way to work. So I really have to be thinking ahead and prepping these things on the days that I have off. Today I'm gonna to share with you guys a few things that I like to pack for breakfast and for lunch. And the reason that I really like these things is because they're super easy to make, they're very convenient to store and just grab and go when you need it, and they're fast to eat. And as you can tell, I have my sidekick, Emory Joy, here with me today in the kitchen. And we are going to show you guys how we make stuff to pack for breakfast and lunch on work days. Let's get cooking. Emory Joy is here having a snack in her high chair while we cook. She likes to always see what's going on. She's having some cheese and bacon. These are ingredients in the first thing that we are going to cook for breakfast. Okay, so for this first recipe, we are going to use the Instant Pot and we are going to be making some bacon and cheese egg bites. I don't know about you guys, but I am obsessed with these little egg bites from Starbucks, and I found a copycat recipe that I can make in my Instant Pot in like 10 minutes, and I absolutely love it. They keep well in the refrigerator, and they're so easy to just grab, throw in my bag, and hit the road. First, we are going to need to get out our Instant Pot, I use this little metal thing in the bottom of it and that just helps to keep me from burning my hands. It helps me to lift out the object that's in the pot. And this is a little silicone baking dish that came with my Instant Pot. And this makes the perfect little egg bite cups. It's the perfect size and it has this little silicone cover as well. I have all of our ingredients laid out here on the counter. We are going to need some eggs, some cottage cheese, some heavy whipping cream, some shredded cheese. I went with a smoky cheddar. I like to buy the block of cheese actually and shred it because it doesn't have that preservative that keeps it from clumping in the bag. And I think that it just makes the cheese a little bit creamier. And then we are going to need some bacon. So I've fried this ahead of time and we can just crumble it up for our recipe. We're gonna mix all of the ingredients up in this food processor and that is what's gonna make it so smooth to pour into our silicone mold. All right, I have all my ingredients together and I have my phone with the recipe on it for reference. So first we are gonna put into our food processor four large eggs. I've been trying my best for a while Trying to please everyone who's around then we are going to put in one half cup of cottage cheese. This is one of the things that makes it so creamy. And one fourth cup of heavy whipping cream. This adds like double creaminess to this recipe. And it calls for a dash of salt. I personally am a salt fanatic and I oversalt everything, so I'm probably going to use more than a dash of salt. Now, let's get this blended up. what your mixture should look like, nice and smooth. Now that our egg mixture is finished, let's get it into our silicone molds. So I'm gonna spray my mold with a little bit of nonstick spray. You don't have to, but I just find that it helps let go a little bit better. And now let's pour our egg mixture into the cups. 
Now you do have to remember that this egg mixture is going to puff up, so I don't fill up the cups all the way. Now we're going to add our shredded cheese into the egg molds and we are going to crumble up some of our bacon to put in there. Now I'm gonna use like a little chopstick to kind of stir up the stuff in the egg cup because I like it to be distributed throughout instead of just all sitting on the bottom or the top of the egg cup. And I'm just using a chopstick actually to do this. <laughs> and that's just the only thing that I could find that was like long and skinny really. I'm gonna use a paper towel to wipe away the excess from the middle. And voila. All right, now that we've got everything poured into our silicone mold, let's get our Instant Pot ready. So I am going to Put one cup of water into the bottom of the pot and we are going to put this basket down in here. And then our egg cups go on that. Okay, we are going to go to the steam setting here, and we are going to cook for 10, no, probably 12 minutes. Let's go 13, I think that was my magic number last time. And we're gonna go on high pressure. Now, I think if I leave this alone, it just starts on its own. And you do want to make sure that your little pressure valve here is turned where it keeps the steam in. If you turn it this way, it lets the steam out the top. So it has to be turned this way to keep the steam in. All right, our egg bites are all finished. Let's let some of this steam out here. My little knob. A lot of it has already naturally been let out. And let's open our pot and be careful because this is hot. Let's get these out. This is what our little egg bites look like when they're all finished. They usually come out pretty easy. And that is it. Now, because I'm at work so incredibly early, I'm leaving about 2.30 in the morning from the house to go to work. At 2.30 in the morning, I really don't feel like eating breakfast yet, but if I start working for hours on an empty stomach, I am gonna get so nauseous. So I have come up with a little protein shake that gives me something in my stomach and some caffeine so that I can actually keep my eyes open at that time of the morning. So let me just share this quick little recipe for you that you can mix up in the morning and head out the door. So what you're gonna need for this recipe is a premier protein shake or a protein shake of your choice. 
and some espresso shots. These are the ones that I like. I get them on Amazon and I will link them below and a cup of ice. So literally I just pour the protein shake in, add my two shots of espresso and some ice and mix it up and hit the road. This gives me something in my stomach so that I'm not nauseous working on an empty stomach for hours before I can actually stop to eat a real breakfast. And I also get some caffeine, so it's like a win-win. One of the reasons that I love this protein shake so much is because not only does it have 30 grams of protein in it, but it only has one gram of sugar and 160 calories. So it tastes great and it's nutritious. It doesn't have a lot of extra things. So I found that other protein shakes, even though they might taste really good, they have a lot of extra things in them, like a lot of extra sugar, a lot of extra carbs. And so having a lot of protein in it is great, but all of the other stuff kind of cancels the good out. So that's why I really like these Premier protein shakes for my morning shake. Now that we have talked about a couple of breakfasts, let's talk about what to pack for lunch. One of my favorite, most easy make ahead grab and go things are tortilla shell pinwheels with like a meat and a cheese and a lettuce in them. You can really put like literally anything rolled up in a tortilla shell and cut it up in pinwheels and it's gonna be good. But let me show you what I prefer to put in mine. So this is the ingredients that we are going to use. We have some tortilla shells, we have some lettuce, we have some cheddar jack cheese, some brown sugar ham, and some cream cheese. I think that the cream cheese really kind of binds everything and helps hold it all together. So let's whip this up. At first, I'm gonna spread my cream cheese onto my tortilla shell. I'm not gonna lie, I spread this pretty thick. I love anything involving cream cheese, like literally anything. I liked the whipped cream cheeses for this too, and you can get all kinds of different flavors, like the garden vegetable one, that is really good. Or there's like a chive one, or you could even do a sweet roll with like the honey nut and like the banana and some actual honey, that would be really good too if you're looking for more of a sweet roll rather than a savory roll. I did let this set out a little bit too so that it would kind of thicken up. Sorry, that was my phone in the background. <laughs> okay, so have my cream cheese on my tortilla shell. Now I want to add some shredded cheese. And I usually put this layer on next because the cream cheese kind of helps bind together the, the regular cheese. I don't really skimp on this layer either. Now we are going to add some of our brown sugar ham. And I'm just gonna layer this on usually like three to four slices. Probably gonna be four. Then I do like a little bit of lettuce or spinach, either one, in the middle just to add a little bit of veggie. And like I said, you can really add like anything to this roll. Any kind of meats, any kind of cheeses, or you know, like we were talking about earlier, making it sweet instead of savory. Okay, now I'm just gonna roll this guy up and try to do it as tightly as I can. Now that it's in a roll, I want to wrap it with some plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator to chill and that is going to help all of this to bind together. After it's chilled, I can bring it out of the refrigerator and chop it into little pinwheels. Now our little pinwheel is finished in the refrigerator and ready to slice. I'm going to use a bread knife to slice this because I feel like it just keeps the tortilla shell together better rub it up as much. 
I'm just gonna slice this into little like half inch pieces. And my husband is always agreeable to eat the ends. <laughs> And that is what they look like. Here are the ingredients that we are going to need for the next recipe for lunch. We are going to need some slices of bread, some peanut butter, some jelly, and a little pie maker. I got this one from Tupperware years ago. So this recipe really brings me back to my childhood. I mean, who doesn't like a good peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Let me know in the comments below if you used to have those as a child and loved them like I do. My favorite kind of jelly to use has always been grape, but a few years ago I learned how to make jelly out of violets that you pick in the springtime and it tastes exactly like grape jelly and it is so good. So that is what we are going to use today for this peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This reminds me of those Uncrustables that you can buy at the store. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen those, but my kids love those. So we are going to start out with one slice of bread, and we are going to keep our ingredients more toward the middle. So I'm going to put a little dollop of peanut butter on the middle. And then a little spoonful of our homemade jelly. Okay, now I'm going to take my little pie maker that I got from Tupperware. I don't even remember how long I've had this, but it, I got it for making like those little fried pies. You know, you put the crust and the stuff in the middle and then fold it over. So I thought that it would be perfect for making these little uncrustables, I guess is what you could call them. <laughs> Except ours is probably gonna have a crust, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna lay this onto the little pie maker and literally fold it over in the middle and press. So that didn't work because it all came out the back. <laughs> Day two. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, my kids will eat this one. They don't care what it looks like. <laughs> Maybe I filled it too full. <laughs> Let's put less peanut butter. Let's try less peanut butter. <laughs> so we'll spread it out in the middle. Let's try this again. And then put our jelly. Kind of spread it around to make it a little bit more even. Okay. Let's put it in our little pie maker and squish it together. Whew, okay, it didn't come out the back this time. <laughs> so I guess I'm kind of going to it's hard to get it to stick. Oh, that's much prettier. So I think I can just like pull the pieces of crust off here. That's totally cute. Now check out our little peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Isn't that adorable? Okay, let's check out our lineup. The first breakfast that we did today was the protein shake with the shots of espresso and ice. The second one that we did were the egg, cheese, and bacon bites. And then we have two lunches that we made. We have some sliced bananas with honey on them, and we have our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then our second lunch, we have our ham and cheese pinwheels. I threw in some little cherry tomatoes and some pretzel sticks. And that is it. I also wanted to mention real quick that all of the meals that we made today are freezable. So you can make these ahead of time, throw them in the freezer, pull them out the night before and put them in the refrigerator when you know that you're gonna need them. So if you have some time 
on the weekends because let's face it, we don't always have time on our days off to meal prep. We've got so many things here at home that we have to do that don't get done while we're working those incredibly long shifts. So if you have 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there on the weekend, just put one of these items together, throw it in the freezer, and then it is ready and accessible for you when you need it. Just lay it out in the fridge the night before, and then when you get up at the wee hours of the morning, like all of us nurses do, you can just grab it out of the fridge, throw it in your work bag, and hit the road. And then you do not have to worry about stopping somewhere for breakfast or trying to get somewhere for lunch or getting down to the cafeteria for lunch because we don't really have time for that. <laughs> I hope that you were able to find some inspiration in this video for some things that you might like to pack for lunches and for breakfast. If you have any good ideas, let me know in the comments below because I am always looking for something different to take with me. I get tired of eating the same old thing over and over again, but seriously, these recipes are fast and they are easy and they're convenient, so they are some of my go-tos. Thank you again so much for watching. Your support on this channel means the absolute world to myself and my family. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.